Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeff from the Overwatch team. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, hello. Welcome to the channel. I am Stylos, and I've got a very special guest today. It is Mr. Jeff Kaplan. And what we're going to do is have a little bit of a chat about the new LFG system uh, and endorsements and all of that kind of jazz. So I think, Jeff, best place to start off with this is, like, when did you first start thinking about adding this to the game? Like, was there a trigger? Like a moment where you thought, ah, oh, we've absolutely got to add this to the game. Actually, the LFG system, there's a there's a long story behind it. So I'm known to ramble. So I will tell you the history of the LFG system. <laughs> and this just shows that I am stupid and wrong a lot of the time. So uh, we have a, an amazing lead software engineer on our team named Keith Miron. And Keith is like a brilliant guy. And he's worked on so many of the different features like custom game that we've added to Overwatch over the years. And we were still in beta. And Keith came to me and said, you know what this game really needs is it really needs an LFG system. And I, I can't believe that I did this, but I literally argued back with him. And I said, you know, all of the feature time that we have, I think would be better spent on other things. And players are going to be friendly with one another and they're going to find one another. <laughs> and, they're gonna form yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's great. And I had a moment where I had to like hat in hand walk over to Keith because by the way, Keith is the guy who had to make this feature happen along with uh, a lot of other very talented people. But I, I literally walked over to Keith. It was about six or seven months ago. And I said, Keith, remember during beta when you asked for LFG and I said, now is not the right time. Well, now is the right time. <laughs> totally wrong and whatever i have to do to make it up to you i will make it up to you okay so yeah like i i think for me like one of the issues that i've had with overwatch for a while has been uh, it, it's almost like a feeling of dread when you go into a game and you don't have teammates capable of forming a team but the previous game you just had was absolutely awesome because you know you had like a viable team comp it felt great the next game not so much it's kind of like these extreme highs and then you know, very low lows, which, which don't feel great. Um, I guess like what I'd like to know is because we know that uh, like we see the version of this on the PTR. Um, like what's the future for this? Like where are you going to take this? Like what problems do you see this system like having right now? Because I think there's a few. Yeah, there, there's a few issues with it right yeah. now. Um, and there are iterations that we have planned for the future. Like right now, I think it's a little bit clunky when you're going in and out of matches with a group or when somebody leaves a group, um, it, it could be improved for sure. So um, we have some flow issues right now that we have plans to resolve that I think will make it smoother. Um, in particular, when you know, you've know you set role restrictions on your group yeah. and like your tank has left and then you need to re-enter the LFG system and you want to find another tank. Like right now, it's a lot of clicks to do that. So we have some plans to make that better. Um, initially, it won't have that, but eventually we'll get there. Um, there. There's some other things that I think we could smooth over too. Like one thing we're really, really interested in is a ready check. Um, yes, we, I was going to ask about this. Yeah, yeah. So ready check is something that's that's on our list. It unfortunately slipped off of this patch cycle, but we have a design for it and we're fully prepared to do it. So I think um, adding a ready check will be another thing that will be great. The other thing that I think could be improved from the PTR experience is right now, uh, and I, I try to say this in the, the developer update, but the system is not a matchmaking system. Like it's not seeking people out and finding them and putting them in the group. Like people have to be actively looking for a group to, to join it. So the plan right now is to add a feature because a lot of group leaders don't realize when they're forming the group that they have to actually go and queue for something afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's this like, awkward pause yeah, where yeah. somebody kind of politely says to the group leader, like, uh, looks like we're ready to go. So we're, we're planning a couple things in the future. On the, on the immediate front, we just want to have a button there. So if, if you said you were going to queue for quick play, and the group fills up, then it, it just gives you a button that you can instantly click to, to go into quick play. We're even debating in the future, maybe adding an option that it just auto cues you once the group is f filled, if, if you wanna do that. So there's a lot of flow issues that I think will smooth out once we get a lot of players actually using the system. Like when I use the system, like one, one of the issues I have is, um, 
like with the new hero classification, so you've got DPS heroes, you've got tanks, you've got supports. I like I want a projectile DPS on my team. And I want like a flank of DPS, let's say. Can I like I would like to be able to say these are the roles I want because I, I don't want Torben May as DPS on my team. But yeah. that could happen and I wouldn't know because their profile could be private. Sure. Um <laughs> Our, our original design for the system actually had you uh, able to restrict certain heroes to say, oh, cool. you know, I don't want Torben May in this group or that like you could literally say we, we, we want two of any tank. We don't care. We want two of any support. We don't care. And then we absolutely want Farah and 76. So we had a design that initially did that. Our decision was to go with something a little bit simpler at first and see the needs of the player base and if we had to evolve to that. Because it wasn't a match-made system, it's not like Dungeon Finder for World of Warcraft yeah. that's just throwing people together. We also thought that there was somewhat of a social element to the group as well. There's always a leader um, and there's always someone who can say to the DPS like, hey, I, you know, you're not gonna play Torbjorn and May, are you, or, or or whatever? We realize that's a that's a bit of a burden to put on our players. So if we need further restrictions, we can certainly add to the system. But we kind of wanted to start as simple as possible. Uh, that's another reason why we also merged offense and defense. Uh, originally, we had offense and defense in the system, and we're like, this is kind of a mess at that point. Like, are you are you asking for a Hanzo? Or are you asking for a Junkrat? Like, what's your intention? So we just sort of merged the two roles together and we thought it was a simpler approach to, to begin with. Do, do you see this as like the main way competitive will be played in the future? Like obviously we, we've got the, the whole like dynamic queue at the moment, but do you realistically see people going out and saying, look, I, like, I, I mean, from my personal perspective, I don't think I'll ever click solo queue, just send me in again, because I hate the fact I don't get a, a, an actual team comp that I want to work with. So for me, the ability to throw up a group and then try and find people that will play the roles that, like, I'm being a bit selfish here, but play the roles that I want them to play and form a group, to me, just feels amazing. So do you think this could, like, maybe push forward things like we go into a full, like, six-stack team queue? That becomes an option? And actually, Jeff, that's actually a good, a, a good question there because what will happen with the matchmaker as it is right now? Like, with the... Are you expecting like an explosion of six stacks going into that? And like, how will that affect, you know, that no, type that's of system? A question. Um, and also, I don't think you're selfish for wanting your group to work a certain way. What's, what's interesting when you talk about LFG is that we don't know, when, when we match make players, we have a very good idea of what skill level you are. We're very, very accurate in determining your skill and we can do that very quickly. That's about the only thing that we know about you though. Um, we really don't know what your intentions as a player are. And every single player, you know, when you're talking about a player base of 40 million people, we can say things like, well, it's obvious we all want a 222 comp, mm. or it's obvious that, you know, this season we should be rolling Reinhardt and Zarya. Um, when it comes to 40 million people, there's nothing that's obvious. There's nothing, um, that everybody will agree on. So the nice part about the LFG system is it allows people to start putting intent into their groups. Not only like like whether or not you even use role restrictions is something, you know, that determines what kind of group you are, how the group leader names the group, you know, super try hard, quick play, yeah. two, two, two versus, you know, um, comp, screw around on our alt accounts. Like those are gonna be very different groups. Now Scott Mercer has been working on a post that I'm very excited about. He's going to put it up soon on our forums. And we did a very deep dive analysis on grouping in Overwatch. Because when we were working on the LFG system, we knew that there it would be, uh, from some people, they would be skeptical because there's a lot of perception issues around grouping in the game that uh, like one thing that I've read frequently is that skill rating gains and losses are much worse for the player in groups, which is absolutely not true. Um, we have complete data to show that. Um, we also have a ton of data showing how the matchmaker- So, hang on. so if, if I go in as a six stack against just a complete random group of people, 
the SR games will still be the same for me if we win and then if we lose. Like, not, there's no change. Not necessarily. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that, and Scott details this in his post, is if the matchmaker perceives that you have an advantage over that group of all ones, the six ones, your six okay. stack has a, a, a perceived advantage against them or a real advantage, um, your SR gain will be much less. Mm -hmm. um, that's just that's just standard. Um, but the frequency with which six stacks go up against um, like groups of six individuals is an extremely low percentage. It's something like one in 1100 games. Scott, Scott's going to post all these stats so people I can't can wait see. to see this. Yeah, this is going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah. So basically, like he goes into complete detail showing that the vast majority of games are um, are played with, um, for example, there's usually a group of two. That's the most common. And then all singles. And usually that group of two is on both teams. That's yeah. the common version of Overwatch that, that everybody's playing. Um, and that very rarely does the matchmaker make an unbalanced match in terms of like a six stack against all singles. That's extremely, exceedingly rare. Of course, we all remember that one moment when it happens, but also <laughs> yeah. in general, outside of the normal like skill rating differential that might exist between two teams, um, there really is no advantage or disadvantage uh, to grouping when it comes to skill rating gains or losses. Um, the advantage that's there is that you're playing with like-minded people and you could say ahead of time like you can show intention which i think yeah is yeah you can say we are a triple support single single tank you know two dps group um you kind of show the intention of what the group thinks should be played or we're, we're um you know role preferences but not restrictions because we think we're going to be switching um or heavily restricted groups uh, I, I think you asked earlier in your in your question, um, you know, where is this all going? And yeah, like guilds, Jeff. Tell me we're getting guilds. Tell I, me, Jeff. Tell me. I, I have nothing to announce <laughs> about guilds right now. I can say that we are very excited for <laughs> upcoming social features beyond LFG and endorsements that are coming. Um, hopefully by the end of the year, <laughs> um, we speculated uh, end of summer, beginning of fall. But mm -hmm. but where I was going is that people were very excited about uh, roll queue. That was a really hot topic amongst the community that they wanted a roll queue. And we actually have a complete design for it. We have spent hours, like dozens and dozens of hours talking about what roll queue would mean for Overwatch and how it would apply. Well, and I know you guys have always had the issue with um, forcing the meta and, and uh, the, the LFG system right now feels like roll queue light to me it's not exactly forcing metas it gives you like as the group leader the chance to build your own meta in a way correct and yeah. and even when we, when we got and like this is heavily semantics based so forgive me but i like game designers this is important to us <laughs> but i don't think we would be if we were to do a roll queue we wouldn't be forcing a meta what we would be doing is restricting the meta um, because even if you like let's say you 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 said there must be two tanks, two support, and two damage. There's a lot of meta variety within that. Like take the Reinhardt Zarya versus Dive that we were seeing, you know, two months ago. Like there's, there are different metas within restricted roles. But before jumping right to a restricted role system, which I know a lot of the community is very excited for, we really wanted to try a system like LFG, which to us was more of an opt-in system. Like yeah. a lot of systems we've been adding to Overwatch recently, like avoid his, uh, uh, avoid his teammate, the LFG system, endorsements, and um, hidden profiles, as controversial as that is. Like our overall theme to what's going on with social and Overwatch right now is how do we give you as an individual Overwatch player more control over your experience? because we can't get into the minds of 40 million people and make decisions for all of you where you're all going to be happy. So how do we give you more control over the type of Overwatch that you want? So before jumping, and, and again, we're not 
strictly opposed to a role queue, we might end up there someday, but we'd love to see, we feel like we'll learn so much from LFG with the either tight role restrictions or the light role restrictions, depending how it gets used, we'll learn a lot more about how the player base feels about that type of a system before going to the full draconian, like, no, now we're really going to force this. Yeah. All right, all right, let's talk about endorsement rewards then, Jeff. Now, I, I know Scott spoke a little bit about this. Um, so obviously, uh, the endorsement system right now on PTR has got five levels, I believe. Um, is there any, you know, are you going to increase the amount of levels or what kind of rewards could we be looking at? Um, I think loot boxes. I think Scott said about loot boxes could potentially be a reward for this. Yep, we're, we're kind of, we're leaving the rewards a little fuzzy for now because we we don't want players... We don't want the driving motivation behind why you interact with the system to be the rewards. Um, there will be rewards. They won't be on a predictable cadence. It, we, we plan to have these moments where every once in a while we kind of check in with the player base and go, oh, these are the people who've been doing really well. Uh, let's throw some rewards around and see how they're doing. Um, it won't be regular. Like it's not like your arcade, you know, nine wins for three loot boxes yeah. you predictably get. Um, in terms of raising the amount of endorsement levels, um, there's no plans for that right now. In fact, the system is very much designed with decay built into it. So that way it has to be maintained. Um, the worst case scenario to us, if, if we didn't build that decay in it, is I imagine, you know, the person who's, you know, sugary sweet for five weeks uh, and they're uh, yeah, and then yeah. monster. <laughs> you know, top endorsement rating, and they're just terrorizing the player base. So um, endorsements are really something that need to be maintained. They, they're really reflective of how are you currently um, behaving towards the player base in, in the game. So I I, I never want to say never. If, if we felt like there was a good reason to add more levels, we certainly would do that. But um, the system is actually designed to kind of, you know, decay people out so they have to maintain. Oh yeah, to keep encouraging good behavior. I think, for me, the uh, the shot caller. <laughs> I love getting the shot caller thing at the end of the game because, like, uh, throughout my like, I won't talk to you about EverQuest yet because we'll just be here forever. But throughout my <laughs> entire MMO history, I've always played main tanks. I've been the raid tank and all of that. So as soon as Overwatch came around, it it was just Reinhardt. Played Reinhardt, Reinhardt, Reinhardt. I like to talk. You can probably tell. I like to talk. So I'm like, hey, guys, let's do this. Let's do that. <laughs> and um, there was never really any reward for it. But now it feels like there is. Although it's not a tangible reward, I'm not getting items or anything, but that like, hey, this guy was a shot caller, it makes me go a bit warm and fuzzy. So like, yeah, I like that. It's, it, it is a good system. Let's talk about private profiles then, Jeff. So at the moment, obviously, it's just totally private and there's nothing there. Now, one like idea I had, it would be nice if you could almost furnish that page with like, hey, I like Reinhardt, I like Soldier, I like Zen. But I'm not giving you any information. I'm just telling you I like those heroes. Sure. I, I think suggestions like that are great. Um, we, we've always, you know, we've always felt like our current career profiles are what we describe as a 1.0. Like we have a yeah. list of systems that we'd love to get back to someday. Um, you know, it pains me every time I see a Red host asking for their training room, for example. Like, if, if only you knew the ideas we have to make a better training room. Uh, we feel the same way with career profile. Like there well, what are, are these so ideas, Jeff? Go wild. <laughs> what are these ideas? Go wild. Tell me. Nobody will. Nobody will know. No, because it <laughs> have a promise. The second I okay, say it, right. like this is this is what's coming. Um, <laughs> but career profile is another thing where I think there's a lot of room for improvement. It's not our optimal version of what we think the system could be. For now, and, and I've really changed both as a player and as a game developer. Like when I was working on World of Warcraft, I was very strict on the fact that armory profiles couldn't be made private and that everybody needs to see what everybody has. And that's what makes the system work because we really need to force this. Um, and we really need to show the player base. So, you know, so what you're telling me here, Jeff, is you go around or when you played EverQuest, you went around just inspecting people without asking their permission. In, in EverQuest, it was social etiquette that you always <laughs> asked for permission when you infected somebody. You were considered rude on the internet if you didn't. What's funny is we had a debate on World of Warcraft. I swear to you, it was like a three-week debate about how to handle the inspect 
message and because of the social etiquette and EverQuest. And the weirdest thing is we said, we came to this epiphany of like, well, if we just get rid of the inspect message, nobody will know anybody else is inspecting <laughs> each other. And then there doesn't need to be anonymous and private and all this stuff. But anyway, where I was going is I used to be much more on the side of everybody should see everything about everyone else. And I feel like in this day and age of the internet, um, in order to create an environment where we feel like we have control over our own situation, we have to give people the ability to have um, some privacy options. I mean, it gets dramatic. I know that there's, there's a gameplay argument specifically around career profiles, but you know, for example, anytime we start mentioning to the player base, like we're gonna show your real name to people, people get touchy about that. Mm. And there's other people who feel like, you know, well, if everybody had to play under their real name, it'd be a much kinder, gent gentler. Yes, yeah, so we knew their address as well and their phone number and all their extended <laughs> family. So then we could pay them a visit. <laughs> well, then, yeah, all the information that we have on you, right? But <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, we do not have your blood type on, on file. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I really feel like uh, players were misusing the information. I know there are cases where the information is useful that you can see about other people, but there is information that gets grossly misused. I'll, I'll give you an example. Say there's players who have played a lot of Overwatch, like maybe they're silver with a few stars um, in terms of their level, and they've got 120 hours on Mercy and 40 hours on McCree. That Mercy player will play McCree and get absolutely lambasted by their team. Why aren't you playing Mercy? Mercy main on DPS. Well, guess what? The vast majority of the player base has nowhere near 40 hours on McCree. 40 hours on McCree is like a master level class in McCree. That, that McCree player knows exactly what he or she is doing and they don't deserve to be bullied onto the, the Mercy. So um, I think we've given the player base two years of having complete information about one another and i think it's time that players can make a choice about whether they want that information out or not and if players greatly disagree with the the ability to hide a career profile uh vote with your choice uh turn yourself to public and uh try to effect change and we'll definitely be tracking how many players are public public to friends or private, I think you can make the best statement by just setting your profile to what you believe everybody's profile uh, should be set to. But will it automatically be set to private? It will automatically be set to um, open to friends. Friends only, yeah. Friends only, yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Uh, unless you want to tell me when Hammond is coming out, I don't think I've got any more questions for you. Who is Hammond? I don't know. It's something to do with Horizon Lunar Colony, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know. They they had they tracked all the specimens. You know, I know Winston went missing. Um, somebody else seems to have gone missing. Maybe this Hammond character you're talking about. But uh, yeah, I really don't have any information on that. What class is he, Jeff? Is he offensive? DPS, yeah? Uh, we, that's, that's an amazing <laughs> An amazing... <laughs> I think you're assuming Hammond is a hero. How do we know he's not a scientist? How do we, and we know? We all know what assumption is as well. Yeah, he's he's a perhaps he's a scientist. Perhaps he's an astronaut. Uh, some sort of test specimen. Who, who knows? <laughs> I think on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, we will end the video. Thank you very much, Jeff, for uh, appearing on the video. Hopefully, we can do this again in the future and with other members of the team. That would be awesome, I think, to do. Um, hopefully, you've had a good time, Jeff. I, I've had a blast. I also just wanted to thank you for all the content you've created for the no. community. No. You keep doing this every time you see me, and it makes me quite embarrassed. So stop No, you're, you're a huge contributor to our community, and we, we just appreciate you and all your fans. And um, we'd love to have more people from the development team here talking to you. Thanks, Jeff. All right, guys. I've been Stylosa, and he's been Jeff Kaplan, whichever way I've, I've put him here in the thing. And uh, remember, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unilost Gaming. I'd give Jeff the chance to promote his Twitter, but he doesn't have one, do you, Jeff? I do have a Twitter. It's at Play Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you on the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Toodaloo.